Mr. John Lovell, welcome to the Wolf and Iron Podcast. Great to be talking to you. Thanks for having me on, man. So uh, I was having a, a struggle with your name because in your book, you talk about Love Ill and the guy, <laughs> you know, calling you out. And I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to call him John Lovell. Um, but I didn't. So I'm proud of myself. Well done. Well Thank done. You, I appreciate that. So you've written a book. We're going to get into that. Uh, it's a solid book, guys. For those who are watching, those who are listening, go check it out. Um, it's got all the kinds of stuff that you need to learn about becoming a man uh, and that dichotomy between warrior, poet, lifestyle, and those kinds of things. But before we jump into that, John, I wanted to just give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. And I'm, I'm particularly interested to hear more about uh, where you grew up, kind of how you grew up, and a little bit of the, it's kind of hard to summarize this, but basically the journey from, you know, kind of boyhood, childhood life to to where we are now. That is a lot. So I'll just a lot. kind of start with everything. <laughs> just, you know, real quick, just what, what your you've entire done life and up the to life now. story and leave nothing. <laughs> uh, sure. So I lead a movement called the Warrior Poet Society. In that it is, uh, you know, uh, encompasses all aspects of masculinity, but fighting for truth, uh, protecting people. And so uh, we are lovers of people and truth. We're defenders of both. Warrior poets are those who live for a higher purpose and are ready to sacrifice in the defense of others. And so whatever whatever level somebody may be at, maybe they're just getting started, but they're, they're committed to those ideals and they're ready to be forces for good in the world and make themselves more dangerous, better protectors. Then you can be like, all right, you're one of us, man. You're one of us. Good. Uh, and so that's warrior poet society to that end. We have all kinds of just different resources. One is we do like YouTube and podcasts, and then we have our own streaming service with shows and mm -hmm. training content. We also do in-person training in case someone doesn't want to just watch pistol and rifle classes or knife fighting or long range precision classes on our, uh, streaming service, watch WPSN. Uh, they can attend in-person classes. I just taught a room clearing class in, uh, Alabama. And so dudes are teach or learning how to clear rooms and, and stuff. Awesome. And uh, though traditionally that was more military stuff and SWAT teams, this is this course particif or, uh, particularly was aimed at just, you know, soccer dads, every everyday dudes who know that if you ever get in a violent altercation, it's going to be in and around structures. It's a room clearing problem, but you're alone. So it's a one man cl clearing uh, kind of gig. Uh, I guess I'm going more into the training aspect right now because I just came back from a, <laughs> a, that, a training yeah. thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, we talk about all the all the good topics. We shy from nothing. We refuse to self censor or be politically correct in a day and age where people all have very very fragile constitutions and really mm -hmm. need truth more than they need uh, to be bubble wrapped uh, for a world of ideas that you may not agree with. And so. Uh, uh, we hit it full bore with nothing held back. That's Warrior Poet Society. That's good. And so you're, you're in Georgia. Is that where you grew up, or um, is that are you a transplant there? I did grow up in Georgia. However, I've skipped all around. I lived over in the Middle East. I lived in Central America. I lived in Washington State. I lived in South Carolina. And so, and I moved out of the house when I was 15. And mm -hmm. so, I have I've I've traveled a good bit. I lost my deep Southern accent. And now I can just slip in and out of it when I'm around very Southern people. So, so did you have, so I'm from Tennessee and I remember, so I went to the military as well. And I was, you know, gone for a while and in Charlotte, we got a lot of Northern transplants around here, but I remember going back home and traveling as like the closer I got to my home, the thicker the accents were on everybody. And I couldn't believe it. Like, like I remember going, I went to a gas station and, and uh, she was, the lady was like, that'll be $5 and 35 cents. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, is this what I grew up around? Like, I had no idea. But it is a, it is strange when you leave and then you come back and you get a, like a, that outside perspective on things where you can both appreciate the things that you missed, but also kind of make decisions about, OK, I'll adopt some of this. Some of this I'll leave behind, you know, right. and that kind of stuff, including accents and things like that. So that's right. Fun. Yeah, that's cool. By the way, I think you guys are really on the right right path with um, the Warrior Poet Society Network and a lot of the Thank things you. that you're doing to um uh, to not be dependent on things like YouTube, where you guys kind of grew up on and, and and blew up on, but making sure that you have some structure and, and things that are outside of that platform. Uh, really, really smart move and really, really well done on the app and, and all those those features. Really, really well done. 
Thank you. Big tech hates us. It, mm-hmm. it, no one's more hated than he who tells the truth. That's Plato. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he knew that, from, uh, you know, thousands of years ago. And guess what? It still holds true today. You're going to say something uh, true uh, when uh, folks don't like that, especially our hijacked institutions of power, particularly big tech, they will shut you down. They will censor and shadow ban. And we recognized as content creators, the only way we could ultimately continue with our message without compromise is to be able to maintain control of our own content. And so we spent an incredible amount of money so that we could stay free. And so we will uh, you know, go to these other Uh, public open source platforms and hopefully convert an audience to watch WPSN and and our app WPSN. And so they're all of our content is, and they can't just shut us down or shadow ban us or censor us. That's, that's our thing. Yeah. Uh, So we we are highly committed uh, to institutes of freedom and unabashed uh, masculinity and all of its truth telling and boldness. And uh, it's not just anecdotal. It's something we put our money where our mouth is, uh, so to speak. Well, we used to have money. Then we put it all in, <laughs> into the, app <laughs> in the stream. <laughs> so it yeah. turns out fighting for freedom is really expensive. So, uh, yeah, there, yep, there you yep. go. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, it's either learn the lesson now while you're paying for it intentionally or learn it later on down the road when you get shut down. And It's true. Know. So I uh, appreciate what you guys are doing and high quality stuff all around. Everything that you guys do, uh, quality is top notch. So anyhow, Thank that's you. enough. Uh, I don't want to make your head too big. So you got the uh, the new book, The Warrior Poet Way. This is the the unapproved or unfinished version, uh, but I've been digging into it. Fantastic work, man. And what's neat about this too is that because you're so well known from YouTube and, and the other things that you do, I hear you when I'm reading this, you know. And Good. so it's it's like you come through this book very very well, and uh, and so I think that's just a it's just an awesome uh, a deeper level of connection on some topics that you know that that people need to deep dive into, but really good job on just making sure your voice was present all throughout uh, all throughout the book. Thanks. I didn't want a pretty polished book mm-hmm. as if you're writing just to write. Uh, I wanted to be practical, and I wanted to just be as if we were hanging out together in a room having a conversation. Yeah. And so, uh, I don't know, I, there, I have a great hero named um, Charles Spurgeon, and he said something to him sometime, I think it was in his book, uh, Lectures to My Students. Uh, but anyway, he was just musing that the more uh, beautiful a sermon is, the more worthless it is, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you know, that, that's got teeth right there, you yeah, know? It's, it's uh, definitely uh, true as well. A good right? sermon you should just limp away from, like, oh, hmm, yeah, he got me. I got to be better. <laughs> I think all the content creators uh, will recognize the moments when they like they they they're, they're you know limited on time and they're not in the best environment and they just make something really quick and they throw it out there and it does better than the things that they spent you know so much time on. I'm not saying that's what you do with your book, but sometimes it's when we overthink things, we try to polish it too much, and some of, we, we lose some of the humanity in it. So yeah, that's um, good. Yep. Uh, so one of the things that I, I thought was, is great about what you guys do in general, but I thought it was a good question that comes up at least on, for us quite a bit. And I'm sure for you guys as well. And that is, you know, when we talk about being a war poet, uh, why does, why does Christianity get involved in that? Because there's people who's going to be like, oh man, I love the guns and I love the freedom and I love the, all these other pieces to it. But you know, why do I have to, why, why Christianity? Why is that such a big part of what you, what you talk about? Well, it doesn't have to be uh, linked uh, flatly of warrior post size, not a Christian movement. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you know, it, it's it's those who live for higher purpose, ready to sacrifice in the defense of others. That's an ideal you have to sign on board with. Mm-hmm. You're like, I, I'm just all about me. I'm like, well, you're not one of us, you punk. Go do whatever you want to do. No, no sweat, no harm, no foul. You're just not one of us. Uh, so uh, but that that creed uh, that that's pretty wide. And so I recognize Warrior Poet Society, you know, like we got a good bit of followers and they're from all kinds of just different religious persuasions or some are agnostic or atheistic or uh, wax a little bit more new agey and Mm -hmm. all kinds of different creeds. Uh, However, I am a Christian and an outspoken one, and I'm going to continue to be. And so uh, that that's where it is. And I think the Christian worldview best exemplifies the warrior poet ideals. Yeah. But somebody isn't necessarily believe like me theologically, you're not out of our 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 group here. Yeah. Uh you know, you, you can still be warrior poet without being Christian. So yeah. No, that's very well said. I like that. Um 
you know, what, what does it mean to you, um, that dichotomy, like why the warrior and the poet, both of those kind of two pieces, um, why did you decide to, to lean on that as both kind of like the brand, but also really the thing that you stand for? Because I, I don't think it, oh, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, very, I don't think it is a, di a dichotomy at all okay. or a paradox for that matter or, or contradictory, which is even worse interpretation. Yeah. And actually, as people would lean in to critique that, and I think you and I are of one, more one mind, but I'm being a little bit more predictive of everyone else out there who, who would lean in and be like, oh, that that's that's interesting. That's provocative. You put those together. I'm like, no, it was never supposed to be a part. Mm. Well, we, we knew that before. It's just part of masculinity in general. Uh, last night I was, uh, I saw my wife, she's in the kitchen and I'm like, she's looking good. And I just kind of snuggled up. I'm like, Hey baby, how you doing? And we started uh, just kind of slow dancing mm -hmm. uh, in the kitchen. And, uh, my son, my 10 year old, uh, sneaks his head around the corner and he starts growling. He doesn't like public displays of affection as I, like, oh, you know, he, he's 10, he's not into, he's not into girly stuff and yeah. you know, uh, whatnot. And I look at him, I'm like, son. You're going to have to learn how to dance. It's mm -hmm. as much being a part of, of a man as it is fighting. You will learn both. you fight and you'll dance. Uh, and it, it's it's part of it, you know. And now if some people out there listening and dudes who can't dance, uh, um, you're like, well, I don't know how to dance. So I'm like, well, learn, you bum. It, 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 girls like it. it it's mm -hmm. fine. And, and a lot, of, especially slow to dance. You just kind of hold on and sway. It's, it's kind of cool. But uh, at least take that metaphorically, right? At yeah. least let that be a placeholder for men are supposed to be romantic. Uh, you, you just are. That's part of what masculinity is. It's to woo a bride forever. Yeah. Uh, and so that's part of masculinity. And so the fact that people view it as some type of a dichotomy means something fundamental to masculinity has been lost, mm -hmm. is will vacillate between two extremes. And that's the tough guy uh, with no emotional uh, vulnerability, which means you're going to torpedo all of your close relationships. Your kids are going to hate you. Yep. Uh, your wife is going to be closed off and she's going to wilt underneath your tough guy. Uh, insecure persona uh or you'll be be the opposite end of the spectrum you'll just be this sweetie pie nice guy uh and your wife is not attracted to that man your wife is not attracted the world wants to defang you in that way but you're supposed to be bold and dangerous and strong yeah that's great and it's, it's also it's very tough for the media to to kind of peg us down when we have that sort of both pieces of our masculine nature, right? Because we, we either are the, um, and, and I'm talking about mainstream media, we're either the guys that are uh, overly masculine and overly tough, and we only care about one thing, or we're the effeminate, you know, sort of weakling, um, you know, they, they want to put us in a particular box. And a lot of people will try to put us in a particular box. And I think that by adopting the mindset that you that you talk about, it makes it a lot more difficult for people to really understand like, Oh, like, wait, you're a person like you're a, you're a, a well-rounded human being, you know, that has these like, you know, these different emotions. You're a romantic, you're a poet, you like to dance. You also like to do whatever else. Uh, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. And I think it's actually the example of what people need because when people see a, a man who's a warrior poet, they see, here's a guy who's living differently than anything else that's been presented to me because everything that's been presented to me is like this one kind of guy, you know? Uh, but you know, you're basically living your life as an example, uh, that, that really makes a stands out in, in today's time. Well, thanks R really to be, you know, pretty forthright. Uh, it's just been my own journey and I recognize I need this, you know, mm -hmm. that th this is, this is how masculinity, this is our default mode uh, to be, we should be both lions and lambs, right? We should yeah. be defenders uh and and we should be um vulnerable uh to you know wives and kids and and uh in in the right order uh and uh, you know because real love protects and so that means grow as a protector uh and uh the point isn't just to protect someone it's to also in, enjoy those relationships and see them flourish you yeah. know but the spartan who can hold the line well enough 
uh, to a battle of death at Thermopylae better know how to keep their family together as well with laughter and um, empathy and kindness and romance. And all of it is part and parcel to masculinity. And it is uh, it, it is unconscionable. I, I don't know why I tried that word. I can't say it. Can you say that word? Unconscionable. Unconscious. It's like you can't say it. So, can't, so try it again. I think you got closer than me. Unconscionable. Unconscionable. This, this I think I just get. do a. I'm just boy. trying to make it look good. I could really um, say it. If I, if I know, wasn't on screen, I could say it for sure. <laughs> anyway, it, it's it's ludicrous that uh, these ancient paths have been, uh, you know, forgotten. And, mm -hmm. you know, we can kind of talk about. About it like we are now but but it took a book to really unpack it and be like yeah. and this is what it looks like here and here and here and then all kinds of just different examples so i i fear in knowing what i wrote versus what i'm saying now i'm not doing it justice i know however there's my best shot from the hip over a couple minutes <laughs> there you go that's great no it, you talk about learning how to dance or learning to dance uh in the book which is it was great because my wife and i actually are taking dance lessons uh, cool. I also do Krav Maga. And the interesting thing is when you start to do these different things, you, you, you do see that these everything plays together. You know, yeah. like in Krav, you're, you're kind of forward standing, you know, right? To get, you know, you want to lean forward, you ever want to, don't want to lean back. Same thing in dancing. Uh, you know, you're giving signals about where, you know, how to turn and to lead and stuff like that and just movements and being quick with your feet and different things. So you do begin to see like, it's not like you said, it's not the dichotomy, you know, one's a weak thing and one's a strong thing. The right. guys that can dance, Oh man, that it looks a lot like fighting and it's awesome. Um, yeah. but also makes your wife happy and it's, you can have a good time when you learn how to do it. So yeah, get out there, figure it out. Rock on. That's good. You talk about, uh, in your book about, uh, battling the inner coward. And I wanted to ask, do you think most guys today, and I think we know the answer to this, but do you think most guys today have a good understanding of what it means to truly fight for something? No. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just no. I wish. I, I no. You know, of like uh, I just I just do I have too much data where where I'm like guys are just checked out asleep at the wheel of their own lives. Yeah. They're bullied around by stuff that they don't believe in or agree with, uh, but they're just fearful for their jobs or for what other people will say or for any drama or mm -hmm. and just not willing to uh to ruffle feathers or to speak plain, bold truth because it might hurt them or cost them something. Yep. Now, like I'm thinking right now of, you know, some of my great heroes and one of them, uh, Martin Luther, he said, peace if possible, but the truth at all costs. Mm -hmm. And that resonates. I'm like, I want peace. I don't, I don't like getting ripped to shreds in the comment section by all the trolls and the you know, tens of thousands of people that hate me. I'm like, that's no fun. I don't want to feel like trash, but man, oh, truth, um, uh, truth is the guardian uh, at the door of everything good and worthy. Mm -hmm. and, and and I'm I'm gonna man I'm gonna man that post, um, because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and I fear. That uh, every single time I abdicate that responsibility, every single time where I'm supposed to stand up and speak, but instead I self-censor, uh, every single time I do that, I, I become a little bit more translucent. I am a little less of the man I'm supposed to be until we dwindle and become shadows of the very people we're supposed to be. Gents, you could be a more fully vibrant, alive you. Uh, you know, and, uh, and you don't even have a grasp of what that is because courage is the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. How do guys go about sort of getting a, an idea of what that looks like to one, to, to even know that they're shying away from the callings that they have in life, the truth or the, the hard responsibilities and that the coward is winning over in their life versus, you know, the hero that they want to be. Man, impossible to answer quickly. Uh, just impossible. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll try to throw out just a few little nuggets. Uh, okay. You already knew I couldn't possibly just like, here it is. <laughs> Grab your pens, gents, and three easy steps. <laughs> yeah. uh, since we started down this path, I'll, I'll pick up there as yeah. well of uh, uh, choose to live not by lies. You know, don't, don't live by lies. Speak out uh, plain truth, whatever the cost is. 
whatever the now this isn't licensed to be a prick and to be mm-hmm. rude of your wife is like do i look fat in this i'm like you look like a cow just <laughs> terrible awful and then you're like see i was honest I'm like now you're a prick man you're a prick you're like maybe try the other one you know there's a smart yeah, yeah. way sure. to say stuff and so understand i'm not advocating you be a jerk or you be rude a lot of very rude cold-hearted folks mm-hmm. uh will hide behind truth telling when really you're just a bully yeah. uh, and i'm like that's not what i'm talking about don't pat yourself on the back because you have no friends but you just say whatever pops into your head i'm like no man tame your tongue you you brute you know that you're not fit for the world you don't even have any good relationships uh and so it's not that it's saying i double down on, on you know uh on key truths where it matters most uh right and, and so i think that is moral uh moral strength it is spiritual strength and that's the core of who a man is and, and I think you can take every area of um of a person uh, of like uh and, and ascribe strength to that area. So moral and spiritual uh courage uh mm-hmm. in that respect, uh physical courage. I'm like, hey man, start doing some jujitsu. You said you're doing Krav Maga, that's awesome. Krav is great. It, it's a very it's a very uh you know don't attack me don't attack me don't hurt me and then oh, you throw yeah. the um you throw the hammer down and you just accost with just a, a flurry of mayhem and i'm like i like the fighter ma- uh, mindset that comes out of krav and, and and that confidence uh spills into other areas of our lives as well so that we can attack our vocations don't just you know uh clock time uh yeah. go out and hustle man do better than everyone else. Don't be a loser. Go win at work. And if you're kind of at a dead end thing, then plot your escape over the next couple of years. Make a side hustle mm-hmm. until that side hustle becomes like the big thing that you're doing. And then you can, but but, but find some ambition and find find some areas. Don't be a don't be paralyzed uh, with fear in that stepping out in your vocational aspect, so that you never really launch. And take a risk and do the thing that you really wish you could be doing. So whatever area that you're afraid of, run at it. That's great. And I think, you know, just as I'm listening to that, these are all things that any guy who's watching this or listening to this can do if he just takes a moment to say, how do I want to change in my life? What direction do I wish I was going that I'm not? How much of this is a result of basically me being the person that I've been up to now, you know, yeah. and taking a, just doing that self-evaluation? Um, I think it's it's tough sometimes because we hear from guys who are like army rangers or like, you know, Tim Kennedy or whoever, a Jocko. And these guys are just so, you know, like they're stellar human beings in a lot of ways. And we think, well, that especially the army rangers, especially the rangers. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> bias right. there. No bias. <laughs> That's right. And we think, well, they're just made differently. And maybe they are, maybe they, maybe in some ways, you know, you and some of these other guys are cut from a little bit of a different stock. But it, it doesn't mean that you that every man can't level up his life and become more of a warrior and become a better poet, a dancer, yeah. a whatever, right? Man, I, I wish I was just made, you know, better. So this was default settings. And in my book, I, I shared some very humiliating stuff, <laughs> very humiliating stuff. And so my hope in, uh, you know, sharing some of that uh, that guys would be like, oh, he, holy cow, I, I never struggled with that. I'm like, well, I did, you punk, you jerk. <laughs> of like, uh, yeah, no, man, it, it's been, it, it's been a journey and uh, lots of fear along the way and, and just failure and humiliation as yeah. well. And no, I've had to learn and grow. Uh, but th- I think that's such a cop out. It's like, oh, that that guy, he he's tough and he does whatever and he's mm-hmm. accomplished something, but that's him. And I just got a bum rap. God made a huge mistake when he made me. You know, it's like uh, if you've seen the twins movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny <laughs> yeah. DeVito and they're twins. Yeah. He's like, all the good stuff goes into Arnold and I got all the crap, you know, <laughs> such a fun movie, by the way. Yeah. But maybe people just it, it's it's an excuse uh, of where you're at so that you can. Yeah, you can excuse the position you're in and abdicate your responsibility to grow any better just by saying, oh, I got a bum rap. Oh, then my metabolism's slow. So 
I can never be in shape. So back to video games and bonbons. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, man, don't have a loser mindset. You get up and just do a little bit better today. That's it. Do people uh, still eat bonbons? Is that a thing? I don't know. It just popped in my head. I don't no, even I, know what a bonbon is. I can't no, I, picture it. I, I think it's maybe a chocolate covered cherry thing or maybe something with coconut. I'm not sure either. Well, it sounds but, delicious. It, yeah, I think it could be. I would probably eat them if they were a thing still. I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't know. Definitely a way to get fat, though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, so, it doesn't but, sound like it, it. it's part of keto. No, I wasn't thinking like this has got kale in it or anything. So no. Um, cool. Uh, so one of the things you talk about in your book, too, is the uh, kind of the war of ideas, which we're definitely in that battleground right now. And I'm, I've actually been so Wolf and Iron started back in 2013 or 2014. I can't remember exactly. I should know that. But I'm surprised at just how quickly things have progressed from, um, you know, there's sort of this angst against, you know, men being men and, and that kind of stuff to full on like transgenderism acceptance and pushing for that, not just acceptance, but just really pushing for that. What are some of the, and I know you take a lot of heat for these things. Um, what are some of the, the ideas that are floating around out there that, you just like, we've got to stand against this. As men, we've got to stand against this. Yeah. So um, everyone's a hero. Everyone imagines they're a hero uh, in the issues 50 years ago. So uh, Mao Zedong, you're like, oh, Terry, he killed tens of millions of people in this genocidal rage. And everyone calls everyone Hitler. Uh, and that's to say, you are like Hitler and the Nazis, but I'm not. I would have been bold and stood against and Stalin, Mussolini, Pol Pot and his killing fields. And the 20th century was just inundated with all these crimes against humanity. And we think we're better and we mm -hmm. think we're braver. However, I would point out we have a genocide against the unborn and we are killing over a million babies a year. And you can launch whatever limp-wristed, weak argument you want against me of, oh, it's somehow not a human life, and that's horse crap. Mm -hmm. It's an innocent human baby growing in a womb by every biological um, uh, indice. It is a human life growing, and yet we have a genocide going on against them right now. Oh, or we suck them out in a brutal way, box them up and sold them, sell them as stem cells and cosmetic products. It's like it's outrageous. I'm like, oh, that's kind of like cannibalism, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, the world has not really gotten better. Uh, you know, we 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 think we're good because we're so close to it, but in a hundred years, our, our our descendants will wonder what in the world did my forebears do uh, yeah. uh, when they were butchering babies by the millions and like, Oh, well, you know, if you had been there, you'd know, you're kind of like, well, it was like, we called it a clump of cells. I'm like, but y'all know what life was. I'm like, yeah, but you had to have been there. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. political speak. It was, you know, as woman's choice, it was a woman's choice to murder. Mm. I'm like, yeah, you could kind of murder if you were, like if you just didn't want the baby. So if you didn't want him, you could murder him. It's like it, it's it's all of our little excuses uh, while we're caught up in the propaganda of today yep. is going to ring very hollow in a few decades. Uh, you know, uh, when we have the benefit of being able to look back, it, it's outrageous. Stand up for that. You want to be a good protector of like, let's engage in the battlefield of ideas and start saving babies. Uh, that are being butchered. And you mentioned the transgender stuff of women are being erased. The, the oh, last yeah. woman of the year was a man. Yep. There, there's a, uh, is it a four-star general? Admiral? Oh, yeah. That, um, Levine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ray Levine. Rachel, whatever yeah. whatever the dude's name is. Uh, and then they're getting all these sponsorship deals. They're like, hey, a dude can't become a girl. You just can't. Yeah, you can't. We can't you, do it. You, you can't. It, yeah. Just period. I know you want to, but you can't. Guys are guys and they can't be girls. And, and 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 I guess it's the natural progression that we'd be so abysmally bad at being a guy, we give up and try to be a girl. Uh, and girls in the feminism uh, movement have gone so far off the end in trying to compete with men, mm -hmm. they have become men. Yeah. Uh, and transgender is, is just the log next logical progression. But I wouldn't say transgenderism because you cannot change your gender. I would say transvestite. You can be a transvestite. You can change your clothes. You can't change... Uh, your sex and gender. So I, I get a lot of heat for that, but guess what? I, I, I don't care because guess what? Whoever's listening, disagreeing 10 years ago, you agreed with me. Yep. So what changed? 
biology? No, it's just propaganda. Shake it off, man. The emperor is wearing no clothes. Have the stones to say a man cannot become a woman. Men can't have babies. Just period. I know you don't like it and you hate me for it, but they can't have babies. Yeah. And so there is war of ideas out there. Um, and the problem is, is when bad ideas reign uh, and we don't beat them in that war of ideas, later it will become to violence. And, and that critics would be like, are you threatened? No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying Hitler argued um, eugenics in a cleansing of the gene pool. And in yep. this way, he was able to uh, kill a lot of um, mentally handicapped people, elderly people, and engaged in genocide against a race he, f- he felt was inferior. See, there was an argument of ideas there before the violence happened. And I'm like, that's what's going on here. Uh, Because every single law that is in existence has the threat of violence behind it. If if, if, like pick a law and then just say, I'm not going to follow that law. And if you do that long enough, people will show up with guns. I don't like taxes. Great. Don't pay taxes long enough. See what happens. People with guns will come to your house and and take your taxes. Take what's yours plus interest. So, uh, Anyway, just know War of Ideas is really, really, really important, and I'm for peace, and I threaten no violence at all here. I'm just saying, hey, let, let's let let's speak out in the War of Ideas. Yeah, and, and that's – for the guys who are listening to this or watching this, that's extremely – it's a bold thing for a man to do these days. It's strange to think that the things that we would have all talked about 20 years ago, or maybe not maybe not in the case of abortion, but many people with, with abortion, but certainly with uh, transvestite, transgenderism, whatever, LGBTQ type stuff, we would have all probably been on the same page and, and been you know sp- speaking about that publicly. And now people don't. And so the ability to simply say what is right is, is, is being a warrior. It's putting that, you know, it's taking that stance. And, um, you know, guys, it's, it's, it, you don't have to be a John to do that. You don't have to, you know, but to, to say like, I don't agree with that. I don't believe with that. Or even just right. asking questions. Is that really true? Why do you believe that? Right. Questions are a great way to take a stance. That's and I think guys have got to warm themselves up back into like, I need to be able to express what I believe and what I think. Um, otherwise I'm already a victim of society trying to shut me down and not allowing me to speak my mind, you know? Yeah. And uh, if we can't speak, then what's the, if we're not willing to speak, what's the point of free speech in the first place? You know? Right. That's a good so, point. Yeah. No, it's good stuff, man. Um, which is harder for you, the warrior side or the poet side? Or I say, which one comes least naturally to you? Maybe they're both natural to you now, but is there one that where you're just like, all right, I got to pick this up a little bit better. Poet. Poet. Poet's harder. Yeah. I don't want to be vulnerable with anyone. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I get mad at me and my wife every once in a while I'll have some, you know, bigger fight. And, you know, my anger feels so much stronger mm-hmm. than my vulnerable humility. It, it's not. It, 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 your your rage is pure weakness in that context because mm-hmm. uh, rage can be strength in other contexts. It, it's, it's the right thing in the wrong time is now the wrong thing. And so uh, for me to – I don't want to win the point here. Uh, I, I do have things that I, I want to communicate. I'm not going to just be like, oh, well, whatever you say, baby. Now you're going to make a monster of a wife. I can't let her get away with everything. <laughs> right. But I can go about it in such a way that I'm leading in a sensitive and generally kind, spirited, and loving way. We're still going to talk about this. And guess what? I may need to change a little bit, but she does too. And we're working on that. And there's a much better way to go about it. And and, and that's hard for me. I want to be right. I, mm-hmm. I want to win the argument. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'm just wrong. And that sucks. Or, or to be romantic. Uh, that That's hard work. You know, that, that doesn't happen naturally. Especially when you've been in, you know, we're in our 17th year of marriage. Yeah. You know, of, uh, uh, you know, early passion, uh, you know, first six months or year Mm -hmm. or two. Uh, But then you got to fight to keep that. You got to keep feeding the fire to see it burn. And if you stop feeding the fire, it does go out. And gents, you're the leader. That's your fault. So 
restart the fire and then keep you know feeding it with regular date nights uh, and stuff. And, and so that that's that's a more challenging thing of I'm just not incredibly bright when it comes to discerning my own feelings in my own heart. Typically, my wife knows when something's up with me before I do. I'm just an idiot like that. Now I can sense something's off with me. You know, maybe there's a tightness in my spirit, or I'm uh, I'm easily angered or frustrated on something, and I'll have that introspective existential moment where I'm like, something's off here. I just reacted differently than I should have. What is wrong with me? And it may take me a couple of days to hash it out. I'm like, it's this in my life. Like, mm, yep, I know. I told you. I'm like, I kn-, but. I didn't know. Right. And so uh anyway, that that uh the journey to be a better and stronger poet is one that's required more intentional work. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that with myself as well. And the tough thing about that too is when our wives tell us what the issue is or what they think the issue is, and we don't accept that, we're like, no, nah, that doesn't seem right. That's not it. And then yeah. three days later we're like, you know what I think it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, we don't give them sometimes, any credit. And sometimes she's just wrong. Yeah, too. sure. As a, yeah. I, I want to steer clear of the the wife always knows best, mm-hmm. and she wears the pen. And like I'll ask the boss. I'm like, I hate that yeah. joke. You spineless mm-hmm. coward, making her lee. And I know it's just a tongue in cheek joke, but it's too true for yeah. me to laugh at that joke anymore. Of like, no, le- lead your households and have some accountability. And guess what? She's not you know perfect with all the great ideas, and she's always right, and you're always wrong. And if you live that way, you're going to enable a monster that's impossible to be live uh, to be married to, mm-hmm. uh, and, and and vice versa, of course. You know, imagine that she's just this incredibly passive woman that goes along with whatever I say and whatever I want, unchallenged. I'll become this brutish tyrant eventually, maybe not intentionally. But you just kind of get spoiled without getting checked every once in a while. And so you got to fight uh, as husband and wife. The trick is to do it in a loving way so that you can still, you know, be around each other afterwards, you know, yeah. you, you got to, you must fight, but fight better. Yeah. You know, speaking of fighting and, and speaking of, I guess, pet peeves, one of the things that uh, there's a pet peeve of mine that came to mind as I was reading your book is that guys will oftentimes use warrior language for things that they're not really a warrior about. So for example, like they might say, uh, man, I've really been battling my weight lately, or I've really mm-hmm. been struggling with, I don't know, some addiction, or I've been really fighting against depression or anxiety. And then you ask them like, okay, well, what does that look like? And they're like, man, I'm just trying to get by every day. No, like, no, that's, not, that's, <laughs> that's a that's, good point. That's, not, that's, that's a not, good point. That doesn't sound a lot like battling. It just sounds like getting your ass kicked. But you know, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, I, I, I'll probably be watching for that more. Your pet peeve will become mine as well. Yeah. So like, really, that's what funny. what does that fighting look like? You know, what does that battling look like? Well, I'm just trying yeah. to get by. Just trying to get through the day, man. Like, well, you might need a better, a better plan than that. They don't win wars, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So we, we, I know your your perspective a lot comes from uh, being married. So does mine. Uh, when I talk about things, just because I've been married for so long, um, and I, I've met a lot of guys that are in their thirties now. They're not married yet. They're still single. You know, the whole dating game is just wonky, and the marriage game is kind of wonky for a lot of guys. Does being a warrior, or, or maybe even being a poet, change for the guys who aren't? They don't have a family yet. Is there a different path for them? Is it harder for them? What are your thoughts on that, just in general? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm I want to make sure I'm really keying in on your question. You so the guy. Of, so like when a guy gets married and he has a family, I think that solidifies or it helps stabilize our focus. Like now, my kids are so important to me, and I want to raise them to be an awesome next generation, or I want to love my wife, you know, better than I have. So and be more romantic. So I've got some outlet for that. But I'm just imagining myself if I was a single guy, maybe I could see myself doing the warrior side a little bit easier. But I just, my focus goes away. Like, what do I, why am I doing these things? What does it really matter? And so I, I don't know if there really is an answer for that, but I'm just thinking for the guys who are single, when they, when I know when they hear that me talk about family and stuff, there's a little bit of like, yeah, I wish I had that, but I don't. So now what? You know what I mean? Uh, I, I follow. Um, I am me apart from, you know, my, the job I work or the country I live in, or whether I have kids, or even whether I have a wife or not, I'm I'm still me, uh, warrior poet. Uh, now, 
um, because I am married and I have kids, well, that pres- that uh, affords me with different opportunities where warrior and poet is brought into bear throughout the normal course of living, of marriage and, and raising kids. Uh, but the hardware, what's underneath the hood doesn't change based on my circumstance and station. It's just kind of the outworkings of it would, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, of like, yeah, you're, you're not taking your wife out on dates in that respect. And so I got heavy into swing dancing before I even met my wife, you know, and that, that was something I did even at Ranger Battalion, uh, as like, I wanted something that balanced me out a little bit. And I thought that was crazy and weird. And it's something I tried to do when I was younger and I failed at it. And it stuck with because I really crashed and I really go into this in uh, my book. <laughs> yeah, I really uh, chapter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, feeling and, your pain. I wear the yeah, 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 yeah. And so uh, I wanted to crack at that. And so that was different. And uh, um, I don't know. That, see, um, when we think about noteworthy cultures, th- think of an ancient culture that was great right now. Can you think of one? I mean, well, we think of it Rome's, obviously. Well, Rome. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. But a lot of what you know of Rome has to do with, uh, of like, you might have seen the Pantheon in your head mm-hmm. or the Colosseum. Sure. Or, or maybe you'd see some beautiful Roman uh, iconic statues. Mm-hmm. You'd see big buildings. You'd think of Roman roads uh, and, uh, you know, some of their architecture. And, and well, a lot of what we remember about ancient cultures uh, is their art. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack Donovan uh, is somebody who pointed this out to me, uh, and if like, and that was built by men, by the way. Yeah, men used to be, you know, like gritty men were heavily engaged in the arts yeah. in all the cultures. And nowadays, if you're engaged in the arts at all, it's something that it, you're either a girl or you're gay. Mm-hmm. Uh, that 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 that's not true, but that that seems to be you know, a little bit under the surface, like that, that it's, it's tacitly or kind of truish. Sure. You know, if like, if you found a buddy that, that, you know, you hanging out and he's, you know, bearded looking like he, you know, chops down trees and, and drinks IPAs as well. Um, he would, uh, you know, and you found out he's like really heavy into painting. He's like, yeah, I'm into watercolor. You'd be like, wait, Got kids, got wife, got a yeah. You what? No. You what? I'm like, no, no, no. But that 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 was a, a normal thing. So I think yeah. engaging in the arts, it'd mm-hmm. be a really healthy thing for even the single men. There's a lot of beauty out there. I just read Les Miserables, uh, and it was just incredible, incredible. So reading uh great works of literature. I'm reading every day, every day. It's part of uh, what I do, but I'll read wide and I'll read deep. But uh some of that there's just such an immense beauty. Um, you know, uh, of, uh, um, music, uh, or of some of my favorite movies, you'd never guess my second favorite movie is Les Miserables. I love musicals. Oh, yeah. I do. Same, yeah. I do. Yeah. It's a fantastic uh, and, film. uh, yeah, fantastic. And so anyway, if I, I don't think mass men should, manly men should see the arts away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that is that allows a part of us to develop that is important for raising kids and uh, being a good husband uh, and to be all around person because uh, it's not just about protecting society. It's about contributing it into it a meaningful uh, way. And yeah. so there you go. No, I, I definitely agree. And I think too, there's a, however long that, that period of life is that a person is single um, that's a lot of opportunity to, it's easier to do things that you're interested in, in particular, when you're single than it is sometimes when you get married, because there's yeah. you know coordination of schedules, then there's kids involved and all that kind of stuff. Not to say marriage isn't great, but there are you know some advantages to being single. Right. And so one of the things that I see guys doing that they shouldn't do is just frittering their time away, playing games, doing mindless stuff. Yeah. But if you can decide, uh, here's who I want to be. What are the things that I'm interested in, even just slightly? Go learn more about it. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if it's pottery, sure. If it's Krav, sure. You want to go shoot guns one day of the week? That's great. You want to go take dance lessons another day of the week? Do it. You know, yep. um, become that more well-rounded man, and actually, it might help you find that lady that you're looking for. 
quite possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. Because there's going to be a lady that's attracted to that that's not attracted to the guy sitting around. He's got all the stories about Netflix and gaming. and Yeah, she wants to follow. A, she wants to, you know, hook up with a dude and, and marry somebody who's doing something. Yeah. You know, a lot of girls will go for the bad guy because at least he's doing something yeah. different than yeah. everyone else. He's got some boldness about him and some danger about him. And I'm like, no, she doesn't actually want the bad guy. She just wants those great masculine qualities uh, right there. Of yeah. like he's doing, so he's blazing a trail. He's going the wrong way, but at least he's going somewhere <laughs> different. <laughs> and yeah. it looks bold and exciting. Of like, yeah, he's going to lead you toward misery. But she doesn't know that because you yeah. realize, no, 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 you, you want a strong, bold man, but who's taking you in a virtuous, good direction. Yep. yep. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, I think I'll end with this one then. Uh, as an author, was there a particular chapter that you struggled with where you're just like, I, I'm just having a hard time locking this one in or anything yeah. like that? It was the War of Ideas chapter because okay. it, I went pretty philosophical and, and I had a pretty ambitious move where I wanted to give a quick overview of the last couple thousand years of philosophical development uh, so that we could find ourselves where we are now. Like mm -hmm. if you had amnesia uh, today, you couldn't remember your life, you wouldn't be who you are. You know, you, you, yeah. you wouldn't know if like uh, in the first born movie. He gets amnesia. You can't remember who he was. And you realize without your past, you don't really have a present. And so you can't really see where we are philosophically until you understand where we've been and how we got here. Yeah. And so, and, and then understanding where we were, where we are now, it, it allows you to have a little bit better of a, a ability to predict what comes next. Uh, the, the, the best, you know, uh, folks who are able to kind of like in an Orwellian way look forward are the ones that really understand the past very, very well. And so I wanted to do that and then do a nice uh, or not a nice, but a, a very uh, easy to understand uh, sociological critique of where we are today uh, and what that's costing us and what we need to do about that. Uh, and then I, I basically have a call to arms to the war of ideas and really what that looks like and what's at stake. So uh, it, it starts off pretty heady mm -hmm. uh, in a layman's term, because I am a layman. I'm not a professional philosopher, of, of course. I'm philosophical uh, and I've read a great deal, but I'm 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 a guy who likes to read and I think deeply. And that, that's about it. So uh, but I, I wanted folks to be able to have something low enough on the shelf they could understand it. And then realize what was at stake and then what in the world you do about it. And to be able to say that concisely in mm -hmm. a chapter, if I, if I could have made the chapter three times as long, it would have been a lot easier. But to yeah. say it succinctly and simply enough, you got to really understand subject matter to state it simply. Yeah. And so it, it was just a challenge. I rewrote that over and over. So, yeah. Yeah, you did a good job. You did a good job, and and I Thank can, you. I can I can understand that pain uh, when you're writing a book and and you've got one chapter that could potentially be yeah three times longer to get the point across, and you're like I got to cut, I got to simplify, cut, simplify, do it over again. Uh, yeah. There's a lot that goes into writing a book that people don't know about. So um, very well done. And uh, look, uh, fellas, go get a chance to check out the way of uh, the Warrior Poet way, and uh, and and go ahead. It is uh, it releases July 11th. It's available for pre order. Okay. Uh, before then. So are you, are you going to be doing an audio book? Do you know? Yes. And I am the reader. Okay. So great. So we'll you definitely, will definitely hear it in my voice. Hear, in, hear it in your voice. Yeah. Dad I, jokes will come from this guy's mouth right here. <laughs> Those are the best ones. That's great, man. Um, well, look, John, I appreciate you being on the podcast, man. Great discussion. I uh, appreciate all that you're doing and standing up for. And, uh, and don't worry about those tens of thousands of people that hate you <laughs> and troll you. Uh, you got, you got a lot of supporters out there, man. So just keep up the good work. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, men. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. Feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media networks. And look, if you got something out of this, make sure another guy does too. Share the episode and make sure it gets in front of the guys that need to hear it the most. Until next time, keep your powder dry and may a fair wind be always in your sails.